Peace, family. What's going on? It's your brother, Damo. I'm out here. I want to say thanks to everybody that's tuning in. If you are tuning in, if you see the name of this video, it's self-explanatory. We're just going to be basically uh, speaking on the miseducation of our people. Um, basically, a little uh, information on myself. I'm a dance and music teacher, so this is my first time actually trying to teach a class. I've been doing it for more than a decade, and um, this is not my first presentation. I've um, done uh, three health presentations already, um, more into health and nutrition. But uh, today we're going to be breaking the spells that's been casted amongst our people in a miseducation. So here is the information. I got my brother Daffy over here. Say peace to the God. Peace. Peace, God. We out here. All right. <clears throat> the miseducation of our people. What are we talking about here today, people? I hope the audio is good. Everybody can hear me. If you can, um, peace. So here's what I'm trying to say to you people. You black, indigenous, aboriginal, negro, indio, s'more, melanated, carbon, and copper tone, human man was and is the original, the origin, and the first human being on the planet, period. It's time to break the spells on our people, guys. Everybody, you need to understand that you were here first before any other being. We are the first people that has been ever been on this earth, the face of the earth. From the beginning, we are the first Adam. Got to understand that. So nobody was here before the black man, the black indigenous man, melanated man. We were here first. Well, the man and the woman, because, you know, masculine and feminine create that. So, but regardless, we were the first here. So where do we start? Everybody wants to say we started in Mama Africa, right? And I can't negate that, you know, Mama Africa, you see, but if you want to believe that everybody started from this one continent, <clears throat> I mean, the world, the whole globe is real big, so to think that we just started here, I don't know, I got to definitely question that, you see, the root word of question is quest, so we on a quest, so we're going to be asking questions here, for some clarity, that's the whole point. You know, because a lot of us don't ask these questions. And the whole point of this presentation is that we are miseducated. We don't know these certain things. We know about Mama Africa. We know certain, uh, you know, um, nations from, from there. You know about slavery and your ancestors being ripped from there. But that's basically about it. But to think that we all just started here... There's a question about that. But what I'm trying to tell you is that we, as black, indigenous, melanated people, we are planetarians, people. We were on every continent first before everybody. Nobody was here before us. We are planetarians. So for us to single ourselves out to one continent, not even to understand that you got to know that the tectonic plates, these places... All these planets, just think of it like a big puzzle. This is what I try to tell my son. Like when you really look at a map, check this out. You can just see from how the tectonic plates shifted. You can see that all of them connect. They all connect. We're planetarians. See? It's like a puzzle. We was able to walk from Africa right into Florida, or from Florida right back into Africa. Literally. You see A? See B? See C? See D? And look how it's separated. And now look, this is what you got up here today. So we are planetarians, people. We was everywhere. We was on all of these continents before they was even separated. So we can't single ourselves out to just one continent. Gotta understand that you were here first before everybody. You was in Europe before the European was there. You was in Africa. We was in the Americas before 
anybody else for, or any other race, ethnicity was here. Period. So when you talk about Africans, did Africans call themselves African? Hmm. But when you look at this coin, check this out. You see Africa, right? I'm just touching on the basis, basics here, right, people? That doesn't look like African to me. Check this guy out, man. We got Africanus Scipio. He received the title Africanus due to his triumphs in Africa. Right? He was the first to call himself an African. First man to call himself African and other Romans, Africans. Because in 2000, I'm sorry, in uh, 205 BC, he conquered an area in the North, North African region and changed his name to coincide with the land that he took over. This man right here. This white Roman. So what I'm trying to say, and look, the land might have been called Africa, right? So that's cool because he, he, he went to a place, he conquered it, and the, the land might have been called Africa. But what we're trying to tell you, what I'm trying to say is that people, the people there did not call themselves African. That was only what these white Romans did. Real Africans identified themselves by tribes. They identified themselves by tribal entities, by but uh, tribal governments and nations. They did not identify themselves, call themselves African. We're a continent. So when we go around calling ourselves African American, <clears throat> what are we doing here, people? What is an African American? It's a contradiction when you really think about it. We sound confused. We sound ignorant. Africa is a continent. America is a continent. Well, it's three continents. You have the Americas. And then you want to say that you're African, but you're in the Americas. And that's your nationality. Hmm. But why is it that when you ask a Cuban, hey, he, a Cuban is a Cuban. They don't call themselves Cuban, Cuban American. Or so on and so forth about the Brazilian, Jamaican. Does a Jamaican call himself Jamaican American? Or a Russian? Does he say he Russian? He's Russian Asian? Or is the Chinese people? The China man? Does he say he's Chinese Asian? Does the Irish man say he's Irish European? Puerto Ricans. We don't speak about Puerto Ricans, but the Puerto Ricans don't even say they're Puerto Rican American most of the time. They say they're Puerto Rican. And the white man. The European, does he call himself European American? Come on. African people, us, we sound so confused, we don't even know what to say, what nationality. This is my point, it's right here, people. We need a nationality. Our ancestors understood how important a nationality was and is. You got Ed Edward Wilmot Blyden, right? This guy was before Marcus Garvey, before Noble Drew Ali, and before Elijah Muhammad, right? Nationality is an ordinance of nature. The heart of every true Negro yearns and after a distinct and separate nationality. Peace, Lance, and peace, Ali. We shall never receive the respect of the other races until we establish a powerful nationality. We should not content ourselves with living amongst other races simply by their permission or the endurance as Africans live in this country, America. A well-established African nationality is the most direct and efficient means of securing respectable and independence for the African race. This is one of your ancestors and we understood this about having a nationality. So what does it mean to be indigenous? Shirt, sure. face family. See? Here got along. Indigenous Damo, right? What does it mean to be indigenous? This is Thanksgiving Day, right? And everybody hearing about indigenous people, right? Peace. So, what does it mean to be indigenous? It means to be native to the land. Originating naturally in a particular place to be aboriginal, existing on the land prior to colonists, and etc. So, what we're trying to say is that we, as indigenous, black, 
African, melanated, a more black or more. You have that black skin, you are the first. We are the or, or origin. We were here first. So we are the indigenous people. That is what what it means to be indigenous. So if we was politically speaking, black people, we, we are all indigenous. So who are the real natives? <clears throat> this man? Or this man? Hmm. It's a good question, right? Well, if we know that this man has the proper hue, the melanin, we know that he, by nature, existed before this man. Period. Peace, Ryu. You got North America prior to illegal immigration. Look at the look at the nations. Look look at the map. Look at the names they use. You see the Cherokee, the Seahawks, you know, the Olmecs, the Aztecs, the Arawaks. So these are your indigenous places and their reservations, the nation. So, ho, oh, whoop, yes. Peace to the God. All right. The Lost Aboriginal Heritage of the So-Called Negro African American. That is the book by the Chief, Dr. Ali. Peace to the God. <clears throat> Definitely a lot of information in there. So what I'm going to read is this. <clears throat> it's called Genocide and Denationalization. The indigenous peoples of al line, Africa, belonged to their own aboriginal tribes, nations, and kingdoms, which acted as a political body and fought against the foreigners, invaders, and forced them into the Treaty of Mar Marrakesh, in which the foreigners paid our ancestors tribute. Breaking this treaty and acting in concert with the lawless African kings from the kingdoms of Benin, the Home, Oyo, Angola, and the our Congo, our indigenous ancestors was attacked and kidnapped by both African domestic terrorists and the foreigners' invaders. While in Americas, our indigenous ancestors of Alkiba line mixed with our indigenous ancestors that was already here, the foreigners created slavery to cover up their criminal activities and gross international violations of genocide and denationalization. See the loss of Aboriginal heritage so, uh, the, of the so-called Negro African American. Please check that book out, people. Peace. Peace, Jacquel. So, who is Queen Isabella? We gotta break this up. All this stuff is gonna connect, people. All of it's gonna connect. Who is Queen Isabella? So, we had the Caliph Al uh, Abdul Abdul Allah Az Ah, sorry, please forgive me. We have Caliph Abdul Abdullah al Zagal, who was the last Moorish Caliphate uh, to rule Spain before selling his kingdom and the, and the land rights to Queen Isabella in 1491 for 17 million dollars, right? This is important because you gotta understand that he was the last Caliphate to rule Spain. He was the last Moor to rule Spain before selling it to this woman. Queen Isabella for 17 million dollars. The indigenous people of Spain had treaties with these indigenous people in the Americas, right? Queen Isabella then had jurisdiction over the land of Spain and treaty rights, allowing Isabella to have access to the other kingdoms. Peace, court. Peace, God. So Queen Isabella now had, since she had the right to these treaties, she now had access to, um, basically, which is, um, she had access to the other kingdoms, so now she, she had access to send Christopher Colin, Cristobal Colin to the Americas. And I know a lot of people was like, who's Cristobal Colin, right? Well, Cristobal Colin is the man who, quote unquote, discovered America, Christopher Columbus. But here's what we know about Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus did not he was not the first to discover the Americas. What he did was discover the Americas for the European, for their race, in 1492. We were already here because we were here long before they even existed on the planet. Period. So, that being said, he was sent to the Americas by Queen Isabella for more resources. He wasn't sent here basically to take our ancestors. Right? He was sent here for resources, for gold, things of that nature, because this is what they was looking for. But he came here, and he saw us. He found us. He saw us, and he, when he did come here, he actually 
uh, uh, arrived to the Caribbean islands. He didn't come to North America. He 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 didn't reach up. He 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 went more towards <clears throat> the Caribbean, <clears throat> and then he described the people that he saw as Negroes, as Negroes, as Tainos, as Arawaks. Those the Haitian Haitian brothers and sisters. He jump started the transatlantic slave trade. He dealt with the uh, the Caribbean, uh, the tribes in the Caribbean and the South in the South, South Americas, right? So, here we go. Let's see some things that Christopher Columbus has done to us that we are all out here celebrating Thanksgiving for, right? Christopher Columbus initiated the transatlantic slave trade in early 1494. Um, First, sending several dozen enslaved Tainos to Spain. Columbus described those he enslaved as well-made and of very good intelligence. He ordered 6,000 Tainos and 500 of them, best males and females, according to one witness, Michelle de Cune, Quino, Quino, however you pronounce her name, I'm sorry, chained and sent as slaves to Spain. Of, rest, of the rest who were left, de Quino writes, the announcement went around that whoever wanted them, Taino slavery in Spain turned out to be unprofitable. But Columbus later wrote, let us in the name of the Holy Trinity go on and, and sending all the slaves that can be sold. Right? So, peace, Quint. I love you. When, um, so when slavery did not pay off, Columbus turned to, the, to a tribute system, forcing every time, no 14 or older, to fill a hawk's bell with gold every three months. If successful, they were saved for another three months. If not, Columbus ordered that Tainos be punished by having their hands chopped off or they were chased down by, uh, by attack dogs. As the Spanish priest Bartolome de Casa wrote, this tribute system was impossible and intolerable. On his second trip to the New World, Columbus bought cannons and attack dogs. If a native resisted, he would cut off a nose or ear. If slaves tried to escape, Columbus had them attacked, burned alive. Other times, he sent dogs to hunt them down. And, do and the dogs would tear off the arms, legs of the screaming natives. Remember, the natives are us. While they were still alive, if Spaniards ran short of meat to feed the dogs, the Arawak babies, our Haitian brothers and, and sisters, were killed for dog food. One of the Columbus men, Bartolome de la, Ga la Casa, la Casas, was uh, so mortified by Columbus' brutal, uh, brutal uh, astrocytes against the native peoples that he quit working for the Columbus and became a Catholic priest in a single day. De la Casa was an uh, eyewitness as to this, right? So this is what Christopher Columbus has done to our people. African... Oh, this is another source. That is a book that you guys can read. It's called Africans and Native Americans by Jack Forbes. He basically speaks about, you know, our indigenous um, ancestors popping up in Spain. And this was before our ancestors from West Africa was brought back here. You got to understand that we was here first. We were snatched up from here. And then they took us from here and took us back into Spain. And then we, we was in slavery over there. Check this out. Um, slaves from Terra Nova show up in the slave markets of Seville and Valencia very soon after 1500. In Valencia, during the period of 1516, we find in 1503, Miguel, age 20, and Manet, age 10. In 1505, Juan, 16. Pedro, 16. In 1507, Antonio, 8. And Juan, Amarco, uh, 18. In 1515, Ali, that was his indigenous name, now Melacor, uh, 20. In 1516, uh, you have Catalina, the eight, uh, th these eight slaves, with one exception of all obtained from uh, Portuguese sources, they were all classified as Negroes, with the exception of one. Okay? So these, this is our people here. And people, Puerto Ricans, just a little bit of knowledge for you people. Puerto Ricans, what does that mean in Spanish? The Caribbean's rich port. Hmm. Well, I don't see any Caribbeans being rich off of this. Early Taino Indians who inhabited Puerto Rico called it Borinquen, 
which means the great land of the valiant or noble lord and the noble lord. In the 1400s, when Christopher Columbus claimed the island for Spain, he first named it San Juan Bautista in honor of Saint John the Baptist. The town was then named Puerto Rico for Spanish port. Who do you think got rich off this port? Hmm? The port where they sold and snatched their ancestors. We didn't get rich from this. But yet then we want to go out and call ourselves, well those people want to go out and call themselves Puerto Rican. That is not nationality people. And this is the miseducation. Pictures create a thousand words. I'm a teacher. I'm in the school every day. This is what the kids go to school and learn. This is what we sending our kids to the school. And they're going out there to learn this stuff. You see this? You got Christopher Columbus holding up this cross, talking about white Christianity, and then we see these white natives. And then we thinking that they all had a feast together, and you thinking that they all they met the pilgrims and they all had a, a nice feast and thought everything was cool. Hmm. No people. Africa, America, we were here before there was names for these continents. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. These are your indigenous ancestors right here. See the natives? You see what they do? They knew it. You got an African student and an, Af and an American uh, master teacher right here. Right here in the Americas. Our ancestors in the Americas were, were teaching our ancestors in Africa as well. We are so quick to say we're going to move to Africa and not even knowing that the land that we are currently in right now, the Americas, is, uh, is ours just as well as Africa, the whole planet. Like I said before, we are planetarians, people. My people, we are planetarians. We were everywhere. The only true, real, the only true and real Indians are in India, not in the Americas. Black folks, us, indigenous folks, right? We are the Native Americans, aboriginals, and the original people, the original people of the land, the world. Nobody else was here before us, people. We got to understand that. Let's keep going. All right. <laughs> Shout out to my guy. Yo, look. We got the murals in Mexico. The Bonampak murals. Your indigenous ancestors right here. See that? That's the blacks. They knew. They were highly melanated people. This is all in Mexico. And we, I, I already spoke to eyewitness people that was already out there that's, that's seen these and, 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 and the pyramids and all those things of that nature and, and the mirrors, right? So, what I'm trying to say to our people is that we were here before the Europeans, before these other races. We were here already. And when these foreigners did come, look what they did to them. When they did come, look, 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 look what was done to them, you know? Lock their ass up, huh? <laughs> Pyramids was right here in the Americas. We always want to talk about Kemet not knowing that they were right here. Check out this uh, April 5th, 1909. You got an article states that the Great Pyramid was found by G.E. Uh, Kincaid near the Grand Canyon in Arizona. And uh, right here in this middle picture, you got a, a pyramid hidden right here in California. Look there in Cali. See a pyramid right there? That's crazy, right? Right here in the Americas. See the article, and we got these two articles right here, and one, one was in March, about um, them seeing um, the pyramid in the Grand Canyon, and then got the other one on April 15th, so we know, black people, we got to do our research. So, <clears throat> here's my question, remember, the root word to question is quest, we are on a quest, people, so we are on a journey, we want to bring clarity. Are these people native to the land? of the Americas, and who built those pyramids? These people. Because these are the people that your children, our children, go to school and learn about. We go to school and learn about these people. We go to school and learn that these are the indigenous people, these are the natives, native Indians, these are the people that um, suffered, these, you know? Peace, Milo. This is, this is, this is the miseducation. And we go and we keep sending our children to the schools to be miseducated because we are miseducated. If we don't do the research for ourselves to actually understand what is going on, then we will just stay asleep. 
we need to wake up people. We need to pick up black people. We need to pick up look at the United States Constitution. All right, here we are. We got the United States Constitution. Article 1, Section 2, Clause 3. States, representatives and direct taxes shall be appointed among the several states which may include which may be included with this union according to their respective numbers which shall be determined by adding to the whole number of free persons. You gotta listen to the language that they own because they own code. Whole number of free persons including those bound to a service for a term of years and excluding Indians non-taxed three-fifths of all persons. Hmm. Excluding Indians. So it's saying the United States Constitution, the living law of the land. This is their living document. It hasn't changed yet. That I know of. It says that excluding Indians, they're not taxable. But who are the Indians? Because we know India is not here in the Americas. So who are the Indians that they are talking about? Hmm. I'm trying to tell you. What I'm saying is this. Indians equals Indios. Indios equals Negros. Negros equals Black. Black is us. That is you. We are the people. In September 1516, Father Leonardo Vale wrote to the Rome that another Jesuit uh, was uh, more suave to whites as negros. In his work in Brazil, the next year, June 1562, Duvalet also wrote Rome using as negros for Americans. In June 1565, he wrote Jesus of Portugal as hum negro, basuade, bas, wait, sorry, basizado, and uses a negro for tamoil. In a footnote, the editor states, negro, poor indio, indios, negro de Africa. Thus, negro is used for Indian. Not for someone from Africa. Negro is used for Indian. This is the language. Peace sleeps. What's going on, my brother? Um, so this is what I'm trying to tell my people. We are the indigenous people. We are the quote-unquote Indians. That is a misnomer for our people. Misnomer meaning that is not our names. Um... That is uh, lamest terms of it. But yes, you are the quote unquote Indian in that constitution that they're speaking about because we are the first ones out here. So, my people, my people, my people, my people, why are we paying taxes? Why are we paying taxes that is contributing to our own demise? Our tax money, what does our tax money pay for? You pay, and you pay for our taxes involuntarily because you work for the man. We go to work. Uh, we work for the government, the quote-unquote government, U.S. government, the U.S. government. You go there, we work, you clock in, you know, your money is uh, taken out for, what, Medicare and your health uh, insurance. Is st they 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 stripping out money for your Social Security. they stripping out other, like, three different city taxes. Why you got to pay all this stuff? Especially if the Constitution is telling you that you don't got to pay a damn thing. <laughs> it was telling you that, right? Our tax money. What is our tax money actually supporting, though? Our, pa our tax money pays for the p p policy enforcers. Policy. Who is the policy enforcers? Police enforcers. You know, these are these are police officers. P uh, they're basically, they're supposed to enforce policy, right? But that's not what they're doing. All they're doing is killing our people. They're killing our black youth. They're killing our young children. You know, they're scaring our children in the streets. I, I thought they were supposed to protect and serve the community, but it seems like they're doing more of, of um, terrifying and more harm, you know? Yeah, so this is what they're doing. Uh, our tax money is basically supporting them to go to Israel to be trained to learn how to kill us more efficiently. Do the research. This is what they're doing. They're being sent to Israel to learn how to be trained to come back and know how to kill your ass more efficiently. They also... Uh, pays for the police officers to protect its citizens in the community when we are referred to as second class citizens according to the Constitution, 14th Amendment. So are we the citizens that they're supposed to be protecting? Why is it that we, as black people, can get shot 50 times 
right? And you ain't gonna find that happen with another China, China, Chinese, um, with the Chinese race, or you know, with the Jewish race. You know, I'm not trying to say that it can't happen to them, but you don't see it as often as you see it with our people. Why is that? Hmm. What else is your uh, tax money paying? Your pa your tax money pays for the schools that's been miseducating you and your children for God knows how long. It's also funding the Holocaust Museum in Israel every year when our people was, was, has been, is still facing the Holocaust, genocide, denationalization, and violation of our human rights to this very day. But our tax money is going to Israel to pay for their Holocaust. Hmm. It's also funding Fortune 500 uh, companies like Celgene and LifeBank USA that contributes to taking percentages of, and other body parts of, uh, from our women at after birth. Uh, during abortions for using their blood for their own benefits and making profit. This is what your tax money is paying for. Cell Bank and Life Gene. This is what these are the companies. See this? What does Life Bank do? What does Life Bank do, people? Through core blood, uh, through core blood banking, and you collect and preserve potentially life-saving stem cells. And doing so, you could uh, save a life. Uh, uh, one day, save the life of your child. Or a blood relative. You can bank even um, more stem cells by collecting them from two transplant ready um, sources of stem cell rich blood. The umbilical cord and the placenta. This service is called the placental and cord blood blanking. Hmm. And it's available only from Life Bank USA. And they work in conjunction with these people. Cell Bank, Cell Gene. You see Cell Gene Corporation? What is it that they do? I'm not sure if you can see that, family. But what they're talking about is the human placenta-derived cells. You see? Administered to the lower leg muscles of subject of the peripheral art, uh, artery, uh, arterial diseases and diabetic uh, foot ulcers. You know? So, where are they getting these body parts from? Where are they getting these placentas from? From our women that keep going to the hospitals and getting abortions. Or they going to the hospitals and having their babies there in front of in, in, in the rooms in the hospital rooms with all these men with these white masks over their face with these bright lights and our babies is coming out seeing these bright lights when they coming from the God particle when they coming from the darkness the real light and coming into seeing all these foreigners in front of them looking up, looking down on them while their mother has their legs wide open you know and, and you got all these foreigners and strangers looking in her womb non natural. But this is what happens, and then what they do is they snatch the placenta from from the woman. You know, they they don't even let you leave with your with your own property, and then they use it. They use it because they know that they they can get a benefit from it. They know what's in you. They know they know that they get more benefit. They know uh how much you're worth than you even know your own worth. This is what they're doing. <clears throat> Look at Henrietta Lex. We don't even know. Most of our people don't even know about it. Some of it might. Some of this information. Some of this information might be a little elementary to certain people, you know. Cause uh, you know, I got. I know I got some conscious brothers, you know. That's that. That's tuning in. So some of us know this, but we gotta understand that a lot of our people are asleep. A lot of our people are ignorant, and ignorant. We got. Listen, we not gonna be. We grown up now. Ignorant is not a bad thing. I'm ignorant in certain things. I, I, I'm not. I, I'm not no mechanic. I don't know how to fix cars, so I just lack the knowledge in that. So what I'm trying to say is that a lot of our people are ignorant in policy, in politics, in their history. You know, so we need to educate ourselves as black people and really get up on it because these Europeans is on it. They know about. They know more about you than we know about our damn selves. They know about more about your spirituality. They know more about. Your ancestry, they know about more about your science and your black magic than we do. And that's a problem, so we need to get on it. So, Henrietta Lacks, right? 1951, she was diagnosed with terminal cervi uh, cervical cancer. She was treated at uh, John Hopkins University where a doctor named George Gay snips cells from her cervix without her permission. Gay discovered the, that Lacks cells could not be kept alive, but were also could not only be kept alive, but will also grow indefinitely. For, 60, for over 60 years, lax cells have been cultured and used in experiments ranging from determining 
the long-term effects of radiation to testing the live polio vaccine. Her cells were commercialized and have generated millions of dollars in profit for the medical researchers who patented off her tissue. This is one of our indigenous women. This is what they did to her. They're using her cells to this day. We don't even know how far, how, how far you know, all her cells are gone, you know? So this is, this is what we need, we need to know this stuff. Check this out. David Rockefeller, one of the founders of, uh, you know, the founding fathers of um, this Federal Reserve and all these things. You know what I mean? We, 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 we got to expose these people. This man is on his, his sixth heart. He's on his sixth heart. Whose heart is this man utilizing? David Rockefeller's six heart transplant, successful at 99. Look at this man's face. Look at the beast. Billionaire philanthropist David Rockefeller has successfully undergone his six heart transplant in 38 years. Do you really think that he's using some family member's hearts that's just chopping up? Or is he getting these organs from, you know, our brothers and sisters from Haiti? That's actually going through organ trafficking. My people check out Hidden Colors. That's really elementary to the information. But a lot of us are ignorant in it. So, you know, that's a good start. If you want to read some books, you know, um, there's always, um, there's a lot of books that we can, um, I could suggest. But if you want to, if you want to um, talk more on that, you know, people, you got my, uh, you can inbox me on that. And um, talk more about that. So, peace, Keenan. Are you a natural born citizen? The phrase citizen of the United States has been a specific meaning in the original constitution for the United States of America, 1787. The definition and intent of the constitution was that it described a free born citizen of the several states. You gotta remember there was only 13 states, 13 colonies. The 14th amendment added a second distinct meaning. To this phrase. So now the citizen of the United States has two separate and distinct meanings which are not compatible with each other and indeed in a later issue will be shown to be at odds with one another. They are one, a free born white state citizens in the several states as in the individual whose inalienable, inalienable rights are recognized, secured, and protected by various state constitutions against state actions and against federal intrusion by the Constitution for the United States of America. These are the natural born citizens. These Europeans that created the Constitution for themselves. Got to understand that. So, are you a second class citizen? We're asking these questions because we are on a quest, people. We are on this journey. So, travel with me. The 14th Amendment is a federal, uh, the 14th Amendment federal citizen who was a second class citizen, a jurisdiction, a jurist, a juristic person, a citizen of foreign or interstate commerce, one who has congressionally granted privileges that are almost equal to the white citizen, almost equal to the white citizen. These privileges are secured against a debt of submission to the morality legislated by Congress, including income tax. These individuals are subject of Congress under their protection as a resident of a state. A person, listen to the words, listen to the language that they use here as a resident of the state. A person enfranchised to the federal government, the incorporated United States defined in the Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, the individual states may not deny these persons any federal uh, privileges, privileges, remember that, privileges, not rights, any federal privileges or immunities that Congress has granted them. This specific class of citizens and a federal citizen under uh, admiralty, admiralty uh, ah, sorry, international law, as such, they do not have unalienable common rights recognized, secured, and protected in the Constitution of the States or of the United States of America, 1787, such as allodial rights to property, the right to inheritance, the unalienable rights to work and contract, the right to travel, life, 
liberty, and happiness among others. Thus, the federal citizen is a taxable entity, such as any other corporation. Because we understand, second class citizens, you're just another corporation, you are a taxable entity, and is subject to pay and excise tax for the privileges that Congress has granted you. So this is why you are always paying these damn taxes. You're not looked upon as, you know, you have your own nation. You're not looked upon as, quote unquote, sovereign. You're not looked upon because you looked at as a second class citizen. You looked at as a, um, a federal citizen. You looked at as a 14th Amendment citizen. You looked at as a, th a three fifths of a man. You, look, you looked upon as that. This is why they treat you this way. This is why we're treated this way. We need to wake up. We can get out of this. You know how we can get out of this? You know how I know? Boom. I'm doing it now. Tax exempt. Why is that? You know? See, I go, to, I go Best Buy. Let them know. I'm indigenous. Why am I paying taxes on my land? I was here before all of you people. How can you tax me when I was here first? On my land, on my soil. I'm here. What, 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 am, I, what am I giving my money and contributing? To, you're, you're, not, you're not contributing to my community. They're not contributing to our community. They're miseducating our children. Why am I? Why am I? Why is my money paying that? You know, I go to Whole Foods, get some food. You know, for the family. You know, we eating good. We eating to live. You know, no taxes. You know, I go to Walgreens. You see, with the tax, tax exempt certificate. You know, let them know I'm indigenous. Without the tax, go to Home Depot. Without the tax, you know, anywhere. You know what I'm saying? This is what we doing. We can't be going out there acting like we're indigenous, acting like it's black power, and your money is constantly paying for your own demise. We contributing to our own demise. You know? Hold up. Show this real quick. See that? Peace God. See that? My tax exempt card. I'm not sure if you can see it. John. See my see my name? My tax exempt card? Tax exemption? You know what I mean? They, why how are they tax how are you tax taxing you on your own soil, on your own land? Why are you letting them do that? We can wake up people. You know we always power. Or, uh, quote unquote, black power, or Black Lives Matter, and we talk about taxes. We can we can get out of this. We can, we we can literally do. Could you imagine if all indigenous people, all black people, all black people that's watching this video right now was able to go into all your faces and say, "Hey," and then, well, I'm not paying any taxes, and then they just. You know, just think about them not receiving this tax from you or not them not being able to take taxes from you out of your job and excrete those mon that money, snatch that money from your, from your check, from your servitude that you push every, basically five days a week. Some of you guys seven days a week. You know? Every black person, quote unquote black person, African American black, quote unquote African American black person. That was that's living here in this land right now. Could you imagine if all of us is act, um, pushing this right out right now? Because all of us can do it. We all can do this. This is not just limited to myself. Okay, gotta let that be known. All right. Okay, so here we go. We got the first president. You know what I mean? Let me speed it up because I don't want to keep you guys too long. I know you guys want to grub that, grub them parasites. You know what I mean? I told I told my told the family after I wasn't gonna attack people on the food today. You know what I mean? But I had to throw a little joke in there because we feeding them parasites. You gotta remember that if you eating that turkey, that 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 dead fried turkey. All right, let me not get into that. <laughs> but we got all right, George Washington. All right, so all right. This is what I mean by miseducation because we send our children to school to learn about George Washington. He's what 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 are they teach What are they teaching? That he's the first president. False. John Hanson. 
was appointed the first president of the 13 colonies under the Articles of Confederation. Technically, George Washington was the 14th president, but the first president under the Constitution of the United States of America. You got to understand that. These are two different things. We got to do the research, people. We got to know. We got to understand. And look at this. Look at George Washington working with Benjamin Banneke, the black man, the first black man to create the clock, astronomer. He knew what he was doing. And he was working with this man. Not saying that. Not taking anything from Benjamin Banneke. But what I'm saying is this. George Washington. See? Cell Bank. Cell, cell, cell Gene. They know. They, they, know how, they know what we worth. This is why they want to work with us. This is why they always want to work with us. Look. And then, what is today, family? What's today? Today's Thanksgiving? Hmm? Today's Thanksgiving? Hmm? General Thanksgiving. We're going to read this whole article so y'all can understand where, why and where, why y'all celebrating this damn thing. And <laughs> this European pagan holiday. Okay. By the President of the United States of America, a proclamation. Whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God. To obey His will. To be grateful for his benefits and humble to implore his protection and favor. And whereas the hosts of whose have by their joint committee requested me to uh, rec recommend to the people of the United States a day to be public, a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be, um, to be offered by acknowledging with grateful hearts and Fignal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peacefully, peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. So, George Washington, your quote-unquote first president, is the reason why you guys are celebrating this thing. Before this man... Our ancestors was not doing any feasting. We knew what we were doing. I'm not trying to say that we weren't celebrating anything or paying um, any attention to this um, this point in time because we actually were. There's actually um, astronomical definition to why um, or reason why we was actually paying attention to this um, this particular time. You know. Um, but yes, more information on George Washington. He's a slave master. He was a slave master at the age of, uh, age of eleven and a mason, and also uh, uh, was a slave master all the way up to his death. So you understand this guy, this kid, right? George Washington. He was a kid at eleven years old. My son is nine, gonna be eleven in two years, and this man was a, um, eleven years old owning slaves. You know. This is your quote. This is your first president, quote unquote first president. This is on the dollar bill. This is the bill you spend every day. This is your quote unquote resource. You see this man every day, a slave master on a bill. This is who your kids go to school to be miseducated about, right? Separate this guy contributed to separating families by selling slaves to different masters in the West Indies. Our brothers and sisters, our our brothers and sisters in the West Indies. Separated him. He made Thanksgiving a national holiday in the United States. This man, George Washington. All right. See his teeth up there? He knocked out our ancestors' teeth and put them in his mouth. Not no wood. This guy knew what he was doing. He knew. Um, he knew what was in us. Come on. We gotta wake up, family. It's time for black people to wake up. <sighs> the Star Spangled Banner. Here we go. Okay, real quick. Star Spangled Banner. I think Colin Kaepernick woke everybody up on this a little bit, but we're just going to touch on it just for a little bit. Uh oh. That's why we got to speed this up. <laughs> so here we go. It's the Star Spangled Banner, right? Francis Scott Key wrote the Star Spangled Banner as a poem in 1814, and in 1930, 1931, it became the national anthem of the United States of America. This is the land of sleep and the home of the slaves. Straight up. Straight up. This is a land of sleep, home of the slave. Please quote me when I say that. And this is, um, what you call it? That's, that's another quote from my brother. That's uh, the chief, Dr. Ali. <laughs> well said. But 
we gotta look at this because you gotta understand that this was the poem that he wrote. This is the long poem. This is the whole thing. Oh, say, ray, ray, ray. Um, but we're going to look, because most of us, we don't see the third verse of this thing. All right. Who is Francis Scott Key? Because he's the man that wrote this. This is the man that wrote this. See this man? District attorney. A slave master. This guy was a, a district attorney. He was a slave master. He thought about people as distinct and inferior species. Inferior species. He purchased slaves in the 1800s and owned seven of them. He's the author of the Star Spangled Banner. He's the author of this guy. And check out the third verse. Here we go, because most of our people don't know. And where that, and where is that band who's so violently sore that the havoc of war and battles confusion? A home and a country shall leave us no more. Their blood has washed out their false footsteps pollution no refugee could save the hiring the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave in the star spangled banner and try of the wave or land of the sleep and home of the slave straight up because we sleep not understanding that this is the man that our people gotta get up every day and put their hands on their heart and praise to. Because this guy thought of our, peer, our people as inferior, right? He's the man that wrote that thing, that wrote that poem. You got to understand what was going in his neurons and his, his mind at the time he wrote this. And this thing has been, has been manifest all the way down to our age to right now. Right now, we still doing this stuff. This makes no sense to me. And this, this is what they, they looked up to. We got to see it. Pictures create a thousand words, right? They, these people was out here, long story short, you know, they was out here. This was they, you know, when black people got parties to go through, you know, we, out, we about to hit the club, you know, homie want to be like, yo, we about to go out, you know what I mean? Pick up the joint, you feel me? Well, back then, and till this day, you got these Europeans, hey, yo, they about to lynch homie over there. You know what I'm saying? They about to lynch this guy. They about to lynch, lynch this Negro. We about to go out there and watch that. This was their entertainment. You know how they had these outside movie theaters? This was their outside movie theater. In real time. It was watching them being burnt. Look at these. They, they would bring their children. You know? It wasn't rated R. Peace God. So yeah, man, this it wasn't rated R. They would bring their children to see this. You know, it wasn't censored. They would let their little children, and these are the ancestors of the people that we are paying taxes to. We got to work with them now. They policing our communities. They killing our children. They educating our children. These are the people. You see, they was here with their dogs, lynching our people. Like this, this, this happened. This ain't no belief. This is a fact. I see it. We've seen it. We got eyewitness accounts. This is no spookism. This shit occurred. Okay? You got the KKK. You got the slave patrol. The first cops. You know? And then everything basically upgraded, right? You got the history of the American police officers. Check that out. See how upgraded? Right now, the world, right now, The Matrix is a good movie, man. It was a good movie. So when you think about it right now, uh, you know when your, your iPhone is um, upgrading? When you got to upgrade your iPhone, you see the Apple, and it's loading. And that's what's going on right now. And then when January, Jan, January 17th hit, when Donald Trump get in office, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade finished. Download done. But during that upload, things are changing. So you see, slavery has just been upgraded. Each year, you know what I mean, and you could just look at the officers and see that it's just upgraded to think that you gotta understand the American government, the United States government, its whole building block and everything that it was built upon was off the blood, the backs, the bondage, the slavery of our ancestors, of our people. That was how this whole thing was built. So to think 
that it's changed from its inception, from when it started, we gotta, we, we, we cannot be ignorant to that. You gotta understand that it's not gonna change. This thing has just been upgraded. It has changed, but it's, it's changed to, to, uh, to benefit them, not us. By change, it's evolved. It's evolved for them. It's upgraded. Why they keep having us download. They keep having us, they keep casting the spells. That's why the miseducation of our people, this, this whole presentation is to break the spells. We gotta break the spells. We're here to raise questions. We gotta get on a quest. You can't be afraid to ask these questions. All right? So, should we really be pledging our allegiance to this? Honestly, ask yourself this. Should we send our children to go to school to, to sit here and, or, and stand up and raise their hand to their hearts to pledge of allegiance to this nation when I already, we already specify that you're second class citizens? You're not looked upon as a freeborn or white person or a white citizen. You know, you're not looked upon as that. You're looked upon as a corporation, a second class citizen. You have no, they give you privileges. We don't have rights. That's what I'm trying to tell you, right? They kill our people. The people that kill us get away with it. George Zimmerman is auctioning off his weapons. You know what I mean? He's still walking free, but you got gangsters out here acting like they tough. You know what I mean? When they, when, when they, when they out there killing our people and we here doing nothing about it. We here want to fight each other. Should we really? This is what I mean by we're confused, ignorant. We don't know what's going on because these people are here plotting on us. They're plotting, not even just plotting on us. They're plotting on the future. They know what they're going to be doing. What are we doing? What are we doing, people? Are we going to keep standing up to this? Standing up to this, to this nation, to this flag? This flag that George Washington and all these other slave masters looked upon at, looked up to, and basically killed Killed our people in the name of this flag? And we're going to keep standing up looking at this? Come on. We got to wake up. People, we did it. We can do it. Please, don't forget, we had Tulsa, Oklahoma. We had Black Wall Street. We did it. We found In 1908, we founded all this stuff. We had 600 businesses. We had 21 churches. We had 21 restaurants. 30 grocery stores. Movie theaters. We had the private airplanes. We had hospital banks. We had all of this. We did it. We even had our own bus system. Black Wall Street. Do your research, people. We did it. We can do it. This is possible. We can do our own thing. We can already form our own government. I'm already a part of my own government. Not my own government. It's not our government. It's Shiamaru government. You know? So this is... The, it, it does feel good to actually say... I'm a part of my government. I have my government instead of saying the government. Doesn't that feel good? It would feel good to say that, wouldn't it? Instead of talking about the government. It's supposed to be you. You're supposed to govern your mental. You're supposed to self-govern. You should be starting with yourself. It's the knowledge of self. You know? Govern your mental. Govern your mind. Control your mind first. Don't let anybody control you. We have to get in control of ourselves first and, and actually see... Remember that that God particle and everything is is within is is in within. It comes from within, and then you make it manifest from that thought, that consciousness, and you bring it into reality. Period. But what did they do to us when we did do it by ourselves, man? They bombed us. They bombed our people on U.S. soil. We had we had Tulsa going, and look what they did. You see. We did our own shit, they bomb us, we integrate, they kill us. It's like, alright. And the reason why this happened is because I, th I think uh, most of us that do know about Tulsa, Oklahoma, we understand that we didn't have the military, we didn't have the defense systems, we didn't have the intelligence at the time. At that time, we didn't have that. This is a whole different time now. Alright? This is why I'm telling, telling my people that it is possible. This can be done. At the time... When they did it, they didn't have the, the defense, the military, and the, um, the intelligence, and um, the resources behind them to, to, to basically protect themselves from, from an attack like this. Not knowing that the United States would bomb their own country, you know, 
I'm pretty sure they, they didn't expect that neither. But it happened. So, yeah. My, my, what I'm trying to say is this. That this is possible, people. We can still do this. We can make it be done ourselves. We can govern ourselves. We should be governing ourselves. Governing our mental. Peace, Shion. Peace, Sensei Jackie. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we can govern ourselves. We can do this. We 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 don't we don't need to have anybody else telling us what we need to do. I already told you in the earlier uh, uh, of this um, presentation that we don't need to be paying taxes. You don't need to be paying out this money to 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 uh, contribute to your demise. Understand? Not now. We already proved that when you do set your money on your taxes, what are you paying? You're paying for officers to go out to Israel to pay. To learn how to kill you more efficiently. To come back here. To learn how to po police their communities. To protect their citizens. Because we already read the living law of the land. Which is the constitution. Speaking of us as indigenous people. Black people. As inferior. As three-fifths of, pe uh, three of a person. As second class citizens. This is how they look upon us. This is a fact. This is not belief. This is what the constitution says. But it also states that Indians are not taxable. They keep us ignorant. Because they don't want us to know that Indians means Indios, which means Negros, which means you, which is another reason why I myself am an indigenous indigenous American, because I am from the Americas, I was born here, right, so I'm on the Americas land, and I'm an indigenous American, U.S. national, I'm an indigenous American, okay, but when we get into all these names, we gotta understand that these names are just titles, African American misnomer name. You're not African American. Did Jesse Jackson just tell you that you're African American and you all run with it? Okay. So, at the beginning of this presentation, what did I say? Black people, black indigenous, melanated, black or more, uh, indios, negros, melanated, copper toned people, hue, hue men, hue melanin. We are the first, we were the first, we are the origin. We the original man, aboriginal. Nobody was here before us. So if that's the case, we were the first producers. Nobody could be here before us. If we was here before everybody else, we produce everything. So everything has come from us. Everything that is on this planet, from your cell phone, to your shoes that you wear on your feet, to the iPad that I'm using right now, thinking that it's the, you know, everything that's come on this earth, the computer, to the cell phone, I said that, to, to, to these games that you use, to the speaker, to the microphone, to the clothes on your back, the cotton, with the cotton, all that stuff has come from us. We produced all that. And now, in this, in 20, it said 2016, we've been turned into consumers. We've been buying all this shit. We buy everything and it ain't creating a damn thing. We ain't creating anymore. We just, we ain't making anything. We just wanna buy shit. We wanna buy from everybody. We wanna always buy outside the community. What's going to happen tomorrow? It's Thanksgiving, and tomorrow is going to be Black Friday. Everybody want to quote, talk, quote, unquote, black power, you know, or Black Lives Matter, and they they all going to go out there and go to, you know, Green Acres. Uh, well, these are the people that's living in New York. You know, King's Plaza. They're going to go to all these uh, different malls and spend outside their community. Buy these homophobic clothes, these homophobic uh Owners like H all these different people, these homos that that run these clothes, the, the fashion industry, they're gonna go out there and buy all their clothes and then and then throw an ankh on, talk about black power. This is what I mean by we are ignorant and uneducated. You know, and I was there too, and probably still am. I'm still on the quest. I'm on the journey. I'm here to learn, but I'm also here to plant seeds so we can all raise the question, so we can wake up our people because we sleep. We need to wake up. We need that light to be shedding on our faces because we've been asleep too long. So what I mean is, yes, we now are the consumers. I go outside. We let, I, I live in Brooklyn. I'm in, I'm in Flatbush. You know, I go outside to the corner. I see no black businesses. I got ops on the corner in the corner store. I got Chinese stores. We got liquor stores all over the damn place. You know, this is, this is what's in our communities. This is what they do. They uneducate you and they make you think you're in poverty because poverty is a condition that is taught to you. You're not born thinking you're in poverty. You know, my child, my son wasn't born thinking he was in poverty until 
me and his parents, we were uneducated, and we were telling him that we don't have the money to get this, and that's what we do to our kids, and the next thing you know, they thinking that they live in a quote-unquote poverty, because they think money is the resource for everything. When money is not just, money is not the way, money is not the answer out, people. Yes, right now, it, for right now, what, that's, that's the way we're using for trade and commerce, and it can be utilized. What I'm trying to tell you is this, is that that piece of paper that's been created by the European with all these slave masters on, on the bill, right? No, that is not the answer. We need a better way. We, you know what I'm saying? We need to raise the question. Okay? So... We ain't going to talk all about the bad stuff. We're going we're gonna to touch on some good stuff. Because what was the name of this presentation? Miseducation. My son has to go to school. Our children, your children have to go to school and not learn about this. Why, why are they not learning about King Mansa Musa? Why are they not learning about, you know, the West, uh, sorry, uh, the West Mali, the West African uh, king in Mali, right? The Mali Empire, right? King Mansa Musa. 14th century uh, emperor of the uh, Ma uh, Mali Empire in medieval Africa, ruler most known to the world outside Africa. His elaborate pilgrimage to the Muslim holy city of Mecca in 1324 introduced him to the rulers in the Middle East and in Europe. His leadership of Mali, a state which stretched across 2,000 miles from the Atlantic Ocean to the Lake Chad, which included all or parts of the uh, modern nations of Martinia, Senegal, Gambia, Guinea, uh, uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, Ni Nigeria, Nigeria, and, and Chad ensured decades of peace and prosperity in Western Africa. All right. Accompanied by thousands of richly dressed servants and supporters, Musa made generous donations to the poor and to the charitable organizations, as well as other rulers of the lands. Uh, his his entourage crossed on on his on his stop in Cairo in Egypt. The emperor gave out so much gold that he generated a brief decline in its value. Cairo's gold market recovered over a decade later. Do you see what this man did? First of all, to this day, he's still the richest man, or uh, uh, he he um, his net worth will be richest um, ever. You know, he's the richest human being that ever lived in in history. Nobody has ever surpassed. The, the, the amount of um, commerce and, and money and funds that this man had. He had so much gold that he was just giving it out. You know? This is what we had. You know? Why are... Why my son can't... Why he had to learn this from me? Why he had to learn this from Dr. Ali at a presentation, you know, that I brought him to? Why he had to learn this from a, present, uh, a, a documentary I was showing them on YouTube. Why can't our, our tax money is paying for, you know, these damn schools to educate our children? Why is he not going to school to learn about himself, to learn about his people? Instead of they learning about these slave masters like George Washington, telling them that he's the first president when he really, we really know he's not. Talking about Christopher Columbus saying that he founded America when he know he's not. No, he didn't. He founded it for them. So what, because we learn it from a European perspective all the time? This is what I'm saying. Being miseducated in the schools. They're not teaching our children properly. They didn't teach us properly. So we got to unplug. Check this out. We got Frederick Douglass Patterson. Former slave who basically was the first man to manufacture the car. Right? So all of us driving today. We got to give it up to this man. You know what I'm saying? See that? So his home car business, Patterson Greenfield Automobile, right in Ohio. Slave. He built the first, first first car before Henry Ford and all that. But we don't know this stuff. We not we not taught about this. My son cannot go to school. Your children are not going to go to school and learn this. You got Jan Jan Ernest Matzlinger. He invented a lacing machine. This man was born in Guyana. For all my Guyanese brothers and sisters. In 1883, he successfully invented what, what many before him attempted. An automated shoemaking machine that quickly attached the top of the shoe to the sole. This process 
is called lacing. Machines could not produce more than 10 times what humans can today, can create in a day. This invention revolutionized the shoemaking industry and made shoes affordable to the average person. This is what a black man did, but we're not going to go to school and learn this. Miseducation. We need to know this stuff about our people. Here we go with another one. James Earl West. For all my artists out there, I used to be one too. I mean, I still am one. Music to the day I die. You know what I mean? I, and, and dance too. We got it all there. You know what I mean? Vibrations is pumping. But James Earl West created the microphones we use to this day. 1960, while at Bell, West teamed up with a fellow uh, scientist. Uh, Gerhard M. Sessler to develop the inexpensive, highly sensitive, compact microphone. In 1962, they finished the development on their product, which relied on the invention of an electric transducer. By 1968, the electric microphone was in mass production. West and Sessler's invention became the industry standard, and today, 90% of all contemporary microphones include the one found in telephones, tapes. Uh, no problem. Hey, peace, Anthony. No problem, Ant. Peace, God. Um, yeah, so 90% uh, of all our contemporary uh, microphones included the most found in telephones, tape recorders, camcorders, baby monitors, hearing aids, use their technology. So our technology is being used all day. Hey, DJ Daffy Guns, you're using this man's technology to this day. I got a DJ over here, right in the house, you know what I mean? Are you DJs? Are you artists? Are you people in the studio? You using a black man's creation, but we don't even know. We don't know this stuff because we are miseducated. This is what I mean. We need to understand that we are the producers. So why is it that we having problems finding jobs and we created everything? We need to create our own. Create your own job. You don't need to go out there and work for the man. You can create your own and build your own. Govern your own. That is the answer. You got Dr. Philip Emanuele, who invented the world's fastest computer, people. The world's fastest computer. He's been called the Bill Gates of Africa, born in Nigeria in 1954. He dropped out of school at the age of 14. Hmm, sounds familiar. It's like some of us people that's doing that out here, right? Thinking that up. Uh, so, yeah, but guess what? He dropped out of school, but his father homeschooled him. He was homeschooled, so he got the real knowledge at home. He didn't need to go to a said institution built by... Their, their government to get his information. He was in the crib, in the house, with his pops, with the first nation, you know, the real nation at home, mother, father, child, masculine, feminine, you know, and then, you know, they bring the, the, the God being that they create when they, when they, be, when that negative and positive force come together, you know, the law of duality. But, um, yeah, here we go. So, Emma Gwali saw an inherent efficiency in the way bees construct and work with honeycomb and determine computers that emulate this process could be the most efficient and powerful and powerful. In 1989, emulating the bees uh, honeycomb construction, Emigwali used 65,000 processors to invent the world's fastest computer, which performs computations at 33.1 billion calculations per second. Dr. Philip and Gwali also, uh, his resume is loaded with many other such feats, including ways of making oil fields more productive, which resulted in the United States saving a hundred, hundreds of million of dollars each year. As, as of one of the century, as, as, I'm sorry, as of one of the most famous African American, quote unquote African American inventors of the 20th century, Dr. M. Gwali also has won a Go uh, Gordon Bell Prize the Nobel Peace Prize for comp computation. His computers are currently being used to forecast the weather and to predict like likelihood of effects of future global warming. So yes, this man has created right here. This man right here. African brother. See? He made the fastest computer. You, and you want to go to school and learn about Bill Gates and, and uh, Steve Jobs when you got this man who created all that stuff for us. The fastest com computer that, that they're using for their satellites and all that. So what I'm trying to say to my people is this. But I think that's the last one. But yeah, we got part two coming soon, family. You know, because I, I, I ain't going to keep you here all night. Because I could talk all night. Uh, I got a health presentation coming soon. You know, I mean, I already did it. You know what I mean? But I got, I got, I got one coming for you soon. I ain't going to touch on the food too much. Because I know you guys are eating, y'all grubbing, y'all with the family. And I'm not trying to say that this is not the time.
to be spending time with family. But I also feel like you should be spending time with family all the time because that's your nation. That's the real nation where you need, where you really, really need to be building with. Peace. So, family, what I'm trying to tell you. We are indigenous. It's us. We are the indigenous people of the land. And we don't need to be following any ideologies from these Europeans or these different um, holidays, holy days that they put out here for us. It's a waste of time. We need to wake up. We need to start studying. Maybe instead of coming home from work and uh, rolling up or getting that, that bottle, maybe we should pop out a book. Instead of Googling, or go, um, you know, the, the, the fastest car or Googling Stephen, Stephen Curry's stats or going on Snapchat, maybe we should, you know, go on YouTube and, and uh, try to watch a documentary or something, you know, enlighten yourself. Just take 10 minutes out of the day to actually read something on your history, you know, just every day. If we did that, and then you, you'll notice that. You'll, you'll, you'll start to, you know what, come more into the sense of, you know what, I do want to know the stuff. You know, you'll, you'll become more intrigued from the information that you're finding out and starting to see more truth. You want to walk in, the, in what you see versus belief and faith, you know. It's not, have faith in yourself. Believe in yourself because you are the one that's going to create everything else that's going to manifest that comes out of you, right? So with that being said, family... Um, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. This is the miseducation of our people. Um, please share the video. We want families to, uh, and other friends to see this. We want people to um, be enlightened. I, I, I'm, I'm already prepped. I, I, listen, I'm, this is not my first presentation, so I've already got controversy from other people. So I'm already prepped for it. I'm ready for it, you know. But this is not about controversy between us because we have a common enemy already. So this is not, I'm trying to build with family. I don't want to converse. I mean, I want to converse with family, but I don't want to have to be arguing and going. This is not about that. We got to build. If we ain't building, you be destroying. All right? So that's the whole point of this. We got to build, people. We got to wake ourselves up. We got to elevate ourselves to a different level, to a different frequency, different vibration. We always want to talk about Bob, Bob, positive vibration, but you bump into a dead frequency right now. Okay? So we need to educate the people. Um, we need to educate ourselves. And that's what we go do. Straight up. That's what's going on. So, uh, yeah, share the video, family, uh, if you can. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. Um, I'll say thanks for living. I won't say Thanksgiving. Uh, <laughs> ain't going to support that. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Um, if you're going to go out for tomorrow... Uh, those spells are already casted on you. So it's, uh, what I, what I want to say, if I, I suggest anything to you, shop black. It's black, black Friday, right? So, I mean, support some of your black brothers and sisters. You know, you got some independent black, black brother, people out here doing things that you can support. You know, always got to go run to the mall or run online and start shopping all, with all these Europeans and all these different other races. The China man, you buying all the stuff that they make. It's black Friday. Support your people. You know, do something for us. You know, get some clothes from one of your brothers that's making clothes in the community. Um, you know, get some get some food or get some um, some health some health food or health hygiene products from some of your brothers in the community that's that's doing these things independently. They need the support. We need the support. We need it. We don't need to be looking out for other people. We shouldn't be have to ask other people or other races. We are the dominant gene. We are everywhere. So why can't we run to the other dominants like us, other people that are like you and me, melanated people, you're a dominant. I should be able to come to you and be like, hey, support me. Because we're supposed to be supporting each other. So with that being said, please share the video. We're trying to get this information out to the people. And peace. Otep. Alafia. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, love, and light. Peace to God. Share the videos. Indigenous people, we need to wake up. We got to break the spells. It's time to break the spells. This is what we're doing. We're breaking spells. 
Okay, we waking our people up. I'm cat. I'm 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 out here, um, dropping jewels for the people, and uh, we just gonna wake up. Uh, right now, I'm the person. You you in bed sleep. I'm throwing that water on you. I'm waking you up. I'm trying to get them parasites out. Peace, God. <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to uh get. I'm, I'm throwing that water on you. I'm trying to wake your asses up. We gotta get up, guys. I mean, we can't, we, we can't, we can't stay asleep too long. We even sleep too long. All right. All right, guys, share this video. We're getting the information out. Um, please, uh, if you are going to go out tonight, just be safe. Try safely. Um, tomorrow, like I said, if you're going to go out there and shop, I suggest shop black. Shop for your own people. Shop with your people. Try to uh, support their people, which is our people. Their people is our people because we all melanated. That's what I mean by black, you know? So this is what I mean. Don't get it confused. Indigenous, black, that's us. Indios, black, negro, black. All right? African-American, quote, unquote, that's you. Peace, Ricky. So, yeah, man, we got it. I know, I know, I know, God. <laughs> I know. So yeah, peace, everybody. We're gonna get this information out. Share the video. Share the video, family. If you didn't get to see everything, watch it back. Take the screenshots. Take the sources. I'm gonna be doing another. I'm probably we're gonna be doing something like this every day, or if not every day, every other day, because I'm gonna touch on the food. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't touch on the food this week because, like I said, you guys was eating today, so I ain't, I ain't wanna shun anybody. That's yamming at, all right? But we're going to touch on the food. I'm going to let you live today. You're going to live today, all right? I ain't going to touch on the grub that you, the parasite that you was feeding today. We're going to touch on that, all right? So if you with family, tell the family I said peace. Peace to you and yours. And peace, love, and light. Information is needed. Knowledge is power. Health is wealth, all right? If you ain't here, if you're not here to uh, actually have your thoughts manifest because you, you think you're getting all this damn money, but you're feeding the parasites and your health ain't good, you ain't got the energy to replenish themselves, then what are you doing? You're doing nothing. You're keeping yourself down. Okay? So health is wealth. Okay? Knowledge is power. Keep reading. You know? <laughs> Uh, he said, touch the food. Nah, yeah, God. <laughs> nah, yeah, God. I got a presentation for that. I got a whole... Yeah, I got a whole presentation on the food. I got a whole presentation on the food. So, I'm, 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 I mean, depending on how I feel, I might drop it tomorrow. Yo, look. Share the video. We gotta get, we gotta get this, we gotta get this video out. We gotta, we gotta let everybody see this. You know, go screenshot some of the information that I got out there. Wake y'all asses up. Read some books. Go read. Go 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 watch some other videos. Go watch some other conscious brothers. Like me, I, I'm real elementary. You know what I mean? Um, I, I try to touch on the basics, the root. You know, the root of everything. But it, it, this gets more complex than anything. But you know what I mean? If you can't understand the simplicity of it, then how can you understand to even get into the complex part of it? So what we need to do is understand the basics, and that's what I'm here to do. Just you know, plant some seeds. Some of y'all will grow tonight. Some seeds going to grow tonight, and some seeds might grow next year. You know, so basically, what's going to happen is, what we're, gonna, what we're trying to do is separate the men from the sheep. We want the strong ones here. We don't want the dead. If you want to stay asleep, then you stay over there, okay? Keep your asses over there. We, we ain't trying to, we want the smart ones, we want the awake ones, we want the enlightened ones, the quote-unquote conscious ones can stay over there. We don't need that. We need people that's really willing to act and um, apply information. But, my people, I understand that we are under attack and we've been under attack. So it's going to be hard for us to wake up from this. I was there. In some cases, I'm still there. So it's, 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 not, it's not that hard. I'm sorry, it's not that easy to just jump out of or to, um, to break, out, break out of the spell. But... People have done it. I'm doing it now. I'm the witness. And, and uh, we, we can do it. 
We can do it. All right. I know I keep going on, you know what I'm saying, because the family keep me in here, but no worries. All right, guys. Peace. We got um end this one, and please share the video. You gotta get the information out. And um, all right, guys, have fun. If you're gonna um, go on out tonight, uh, enjoy your weekend. Be safe, and uh, peace, love, and light.